as I just said, that song you just heard was James Swanberg from his debut album, The One and Only. Uh, James is a wonderful songwriter. He can be seen uh, coming to Shuba's Tavern on October 18th, this Monday. So welcome, James. Thank you for, for joining the the Crate Dick tonight, man. It's good Thank to have you. you. Thank you for having me. We were just chatting before this. I, I should have sent you some beer ahead of time, so I'm so sorry that oh, I Oh, you know I, I what? It's all right. That, I got one. But, I got uh, one. I'll do my a little right. plug. Uh, so what are you for... sipping on tonight? Around the Bend's Maui Gold Citrus Session IPA. I've had Around the Bend before. I I, I definitely like a lot of their stuff. They do, um I think, like a pistachio cream. Yeah, that's the, I think or, the, they call that the Vera, maybe, or Vera. I yes. don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, also, they had one called villainous the villainous IPAs good that too. was like an yeah. IPA. Yeah. And then, there we go. You owe me a Coke and, and a beer now. <laughs> yeah. They're just one of those uh, companies where I know nothing about them. I have no idea where they brew it. I, I think they're in like a facility with a bunch of other facilities uh, in like the okay. Ashland Grand area, potentially. There's some kind of like beer, like strip mall uh like in in chicago where like really you know, three or three four five things and i think they're inside I, I, let's see if we can get any more information here <laughs> i don't think i've heard of a beer strip mall before so i i, I think it's, it it's one facility but there's six of them in there six different breweries it's something like that okay. something like that but yeah they're one the packaging is always you know really bad uh, I don't, okay. I don't like, the, I don't like the packaging. I don't like the, I don't like the four beers at, at a pint particularly much. Okay. Uh, like I hate everything about them, but yet if I see one that I haven't tried by them, I'm curious about. It. So I'm you'll, curious you'll definitely about. go for it, huh? Yeah, and I don't even like all of them, but this one's pr relatively okay. They, you know, I, pairing beers to albums on my Instagram, there's there's so many of them that I, I really actually don't like. Like, I'm not a big dark beer guy, but, like, sometimes it'll match the album perfectly. And I'm curious. I, I taste all of them. I just yeah. uh, don't always finish all of them. You know? um, I, <laughs> I have a problem. I finish all of them. <laughs> good for you and I then wonder and then, and then wonder how to get more of them exactly yeah. i don't even i don't have to particularly like them but i i'm curious about them 2014 it says around the bend has been since since 14 since which 14 seems, which seems like they were late late to the market <laughs> uh, but they've stuck around for for a good amount it's six years is pretty good that I put them in like the same way that I would put like a maple wood in the sense that like, yes, I, I, I am curious about what they're doing. And yet some of it I like, and some of it I think is really bad. And and you can find both of them at Mariano's. Oh, they're at Mariano's. <laughs> I think uh, so. Yeah. I've seen both of them. Uh, around the bend started coming to when I was living on Fullerton, they started coming to the Jimenez that was up the, the you know, the half block from me. And so they right. were like the okay. first uh, Jimenez market got like craft beer. It was this was huge news in like 2015. And it was like a couple Bell's. Uh, nice. Solid Bell's, choice. Bell's breweries. It was like a couple like they got a two hearted. They got the, the one with the sun, Oberon. Love it. Um, and then uh, the, they got the company that does like the, uh, the Gonzo uh, artwork. I cannot think of the name of that. Some, like, something um, with dog. Like they, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That and then Around the Bend was like the local choice. And then Five Rabbits. Five Rabbits and Around the Bend were the two local choices. I Love started it. trying out their beers there and then it has here i am years later since 14. <laughs> well here we are dude we got we got to go on a, a beer crawl in this uh strip mall someday chicago's full of them up by me now there's too many there's too many uh we go to old irving now old irving brewery is our close one nice nice and they're good we like them we uh, like them. caleb's hopping in the chat flying dog flying that's dog. the that's thanks, the name of that brewery. Caleb. yeah thanks, thanks caleb, caleb. 
What Caleb's our, our resident trivia buff, so he, he always oh. has the, the facts and answers. So Flying dog. So I, I wanted to t talk to you about this playlist a little bit. I, I say this a lot, but I, I truly believe that this, I think, is one of my favorite playlists that we've done on the show so far. Um, you really, my lighting's not great, but I'm blushing. You did a really good job of picking like some deep cuts, some number one hits, and just some fun songs that uh, that, that's what B sides is all about. This this is uh, I think such a perfect playlist, uh, and I wanted to talk to you about one artist uh, specifically, just because there's a couple songs that come up. Um, but the Love there and Spoonful, are. they're 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 one of my favorite bands of all time, and I just wanted to know like. What what is it about their sound that that you like? Like uh, they are my favorite. I I think that they're my favorite band. Um, I we, you know the big question is like if you could pick the Stones or the Beatles, and then everybody says the Kinks. I actually say the Love and Spoonful. I uh, love that. Uh, they are Canadians who came to America, which is like the constant like everybody's favorite like american story it, like happened with the band it happens in comedy all the time tv like our, our, our entertainers normally are like secretly canadian i like that about them <laughs> i love it yeah, yeah very uh, true. they have the they have like the three record arch that i that i like uh it's a very short period of time from the time that like um do you believe in magic drops to the time that Yaz like sells out the Grateful Dead for a weed bust is like two and a half years. It's not long. They pack so, so much in there. Yeah. There's a ton. There's an absolute ton. Uh, you know, they uh, um, like, cause I, they, for years I thought the MC five was my favorite band because their three record arch was beautiful i solid. like it's so solid it's good uh it's uh the first record is the present the second record is the past and then the third record is the future it's by the mc5 was i could swear my favorite band forever and then i recently realized that i am a softy and a goon that loves the love and spoonful and i'm not that punk so they are, they're my uh, new, what I, if somebody asked me who my favorite band was, I would say The Love and Spoonful, because look at them. They're absolute nerds. They're <laughs> and they wrote such beautiful songs. Like such beautiful songs. And then John they, Sebastian's such a dope, but like. Oh yeah, but he like you can tell he's just such a dweeb. Uh, <laughs> and they smoked like a little bit of weed, got busted with it, and then narked out <laughs> absolutely everybody, everybody. <laughs> yeah. and it's just like they but yet without them there's so much stuff like all up like the dead doesn't exist without the love and spoonful and absolutely. they've said that like the, the like them coming from those new york beatnik cafes to san francisco actually kicks off the entire like summer of love yeah, man. Like it's also like they're so I everything, find that, everything like, points back to the spoonful. Yeah, I'm telling you, they they are truly. There's only been one. Uh, there was we played. I was on a tour with Grape Tooth, Grape Tooth in 2019, and I played Boston, and uh, the, the general manager of the spot that we played. It's some iconic Boston place that I of course cannot think of the name of it. I'm sure that our guy will come in with the chat. And yeah, tell yeah, what. Caleb, can you get on <laughs> that? Find out where I played in Boston in 2019. But uh, he's the only guy who was like, he agreed with me that the Love and Spoonful was the greatest band of all time. Mostly people look at me like I am a complete moron. But I truly believe, I truly believe that they're my, my, at least my favorite band, if not the greatest band to ever do it. They're definitely up there for me. And you're not, don't worry. Every, every music opinion is good here. So All right. we, we really respect it. Mine uh, well, is let's the, just, uh, mine yeah, is go ahead. Canadian dweebs uh, rule. <laughs> Canadian dweebs rule. Absolutely. Great. Scott uh, is correct. Thank you, Caleb. Oh, two for two, Caleb. Great job. <laughs> Great. He's fantastic, this Caleb. 
All right. Uh, let's just uh, jump into this first batch of tracks, and then uh, we'll we'll check in here in a little bit and play a play a game and keep chatting. But thanks, James. Cheers. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Thanks for hanging out. It's no wonder another uh, another great song by James Swanberg. I I I love this album, and I really think that. Uh, uh, certain songs on here kind of feel of the same era as uh, a lot of the songs in that first block. Um, when you sat down to record this, were you like cognizant of of that, or has like have you just kind of absorbed all this music over time and it just kind of came out that way? Uh, the the kind of the weird or funny you know thing about it is. There was no real sitting down to write this record. Like uh, it was, so I had written It's No Wonder, honestly, washing the dishes in like, I'm gonna call it early, early 2016 maybe. Uh, okay. Like was, was like was washing the dishes, took a phone memo, uh, uh, like, 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 saying it's no wonder we're in love like the melody kind of just popped into my head that's while amazing. washing the dishes and then like made a demo with katie and colin in uh, like a couple of the twin peaks dudes right the twin peaks guys yeah um made a demo with them in like march of 2016 and was like oh we're on to something let's fucking do this and then <laughs> in 2018 actually did it and then it came out in 2020 so it's like the song like every song that's written on this was like from such a different like you know just like a different zone it's like it's it's a real kind of patchwork so it would have necessarily had to have been uh you know what was filtered through or like what's you know the uh, constantly there there was no intention that i'm going to you know sound like this it's sure. just i've been trying to rewrite wooly bully my entire <laughs> career <laughs> well and... you, you came close on a, a couple of the songs on this album this you're... is yes this is as close as i've gotten to rewriting wooly bully you're uh it, you you write some really catchy stuff it's uh again you know definitely check out the album the one and only we're gonna play a, a couple more songs by james uh later on in the show um but uh i wanted to uh to, every every one of these we do a little game and so i wanted to, to play one with you uh this is a game that some people on this call may have seen before in a in a brunch that we did, but this is called Band Glyphs, James. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna give you five kind of like picture puzzles, and each one of the puzzles represents a different band name. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how many you can get out of five. I have an example. Okay, this right. is the monkeys. This is the monkeys, so that is pretty simple. So I got five more of these, and okay. uh, let's let's see how you do. This is the birds. This this is definitely the birds. Okay, nice. Um, this uh, hold on, I gotta take away. I I'm missing yeah, the take baby. Take your time. Take your time. Um, that's I only know that guy from Nash Bridges, but I'm sure he has a real name. Um, no, maybe this guy... maybe that's the name uh, I'm trying to hint at there. Oh, this is Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. I'm Correct. now seeing the baby. Correct. Yep. Kind of threw you off there, huh? You did. You did. You did. But I, I, I think I might have come through in the end. Although you, 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 you helped me out a lot there. Sure. I appreciate I'm sorry. Well, that. I'll keep my mouth shut on the the next few. Hopefully. Yeah. What the hell, man? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> you got the hang of this. I. Uh, this is. I see Jeter. And I see pizzas. Derek and the Dominoes. That's correct. Okay, you you gave me the little dom. This is that's not Domino's pizza. So I know that's not Domino's pizza. I, I think it is. I thought I pulled it from a, a, a Domino's ad. Oh, okay. That I, seems that seems a little crispy. That seems a little crackery. Do they have a thin? Well, they, like they've that? got some new. They've got a new uh, a New York slice uh, that they're doing. That's like that kind of floppy crispy. Got yeah. you. Okay. Right. 
All right. So I'm I my three I'm three for three. Three for I'm three. very competitive. Killing it so far, dude. You're killing it. All right. I can't right. miss any of these. All right. Get a little not. tricky now. Oh, this is this is incredibly hard. Um I have no idea. I have uh I don't know who that gentleman to the left is. Um and then that's a, a possible Buddha. Um, I'm keeping my mouth shut. I'm, I'm gonna let you. Yeah, you gotta. You, you 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 gotta you gotta keep your mouth shut on this one. Um, absolutely no idea. I already lost. I lost. You're giving up. You wanna you wanna come back to this one? Uh, let's okay. Well, let's skip this and come back to we'll it. Skip they let me do that on my CDL test. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, that's is this Buffalo? This is Buffalo Springfield. That is correct. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. So all we have left is this. Uh, this last. We got to come here. back to this. We got to come back to this. Um. Oh yeah. So everything has been kind of sixties so far, and even like late sixties. I just have I I'm missing the cultural reference of this gentleman. Uh, I, I could I could tell you who it is if uh, if that would help. Um, I don't know if it'll help. You can tell me who, who I don't know who that is at all. Okay, so someone says it's Charlie Cox. If that. Oh, I miss. Oh, see, I moved this thing, and now I can't. I I don't get my hints from my guy Caleb anymore. I'm sure Caleb's given me giving me mad hints here. Charlie Cox. I know both parts, but not the band name. Um, you know what? I, 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 as much as it absolutely hurts me, I'm going to, I'm going to have to lose this one and not know who this is, what this well, is. That that's not bad. You've you've got four out of five, so you, you did it's, a good job. You have no idea. You have no idea how competitive I am and how much I absolutely uh um want to get this um it's it's it is it is within that that same 60s time frame yeah 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 it's and then i saw a clue from somebody in the chat correct with they said he's in daredevil but i don't know a daredevil buddha i don't know if that's a band (laughs) If All right, get getting some more hits. Caleb saying it's a it's a super group. It's a super group. Um, no, I give up. No. I absolutely don't know. Well, it. four out of five ain't bad, James. It's uh, uh, it's blind faith. Blind? Daredevil is a blind uh, character. And then Buddha is a fa- is a faith. But I have to tell you, what is a what is a song from blind faith i don't n- know blind faith. uh can't find my way home it's it's eric clapton um ginger baker steve winwood uh and somebody else i'm blanking on unfortunately maybe i can, uh, can pop it in here in the chat <laughs> i have uh yeah I'll, I'll send you some stuff that you'll definitely recognize a song or two by them they were like kind of a big thing back then do they play it on Mean TV FM? If they, if they don't, I'm, I'm, I'm sure play. they do. All right, all right. Then uh, um, yeah, I've never heard of Blind Faith before in my life. Okay. I'm, I I'm think taking, you might dig them. I, I might, I might. Although I'm not a Clapton guy. Yeah. I uh, I don't. Which is fine. It's I don't totally enjoy. <laughs> I don't enjoy those slow hands. I like fast. Yeah, there's hands. a song or two that that's yeah. You like fast hand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I yeah. Especially now, he's kind of turned into a little bit of a. I mean, he's oh, always yeah, been a stinker, there's, but there's, he's even more of a is, stinker now. Uh, what he's uh he's he's um backing like anti-vax stuff now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And he's uh he's anti-mask. He wrote a song called with with Van Morrison about how they've had enough and uh there's another song called this has got to stop about how the government's <laughs> oppressing them and okay clapton just you know yeah, what i might, uh, i uh maybe i maybe i will become a clapton fan as he becomes the worst as, as, as like uh <laughs> I, yeah. 
I didn't like him when, when uh, you know, I thought he was boring and I, you know, because he, he's Derek in the Dominoes too, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, 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 I honestly could reason. not tell you a single Derek in the Dominoes. I just got those two references. Uh, yeah, absolutely yeah. hate Eric Clapton, I think. Absolutely. And won't like him. If I if I had yeah. to pick one person in music that I would say fuck that guy, I would be fuck Eric Clapton. For sure. I, I'm I'm totally with you on that. He's, <laughs> he's such a scumbag now. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is great. All right. Well, um, so I wanted to talk to you about The Simpsons. I, I, I kind of get yeah. the sense that you're a, a big Simpsons fan. I am um, a, uh, I don't know if I could say a gigantic Simpsons fan, but I'm eating as much food as I possibly can to get there. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's that time of year when, you know, well, when I watch Treehouse of Horror all oh, the time, yeah. you know, it's spooky yeah. season. Um, do you have a, do you have a favorite Treehouse of Horror episode? I, th- I, I as a kid the the 3D episode blew my mind when like, yeah. Homer, when Homer went into the 3D world and then on like the back side of that he went into like the real world like uh yeah and our world our world he came into our world and like was walking down the street and like there's a forever like you know etched in my brain Dude. like i know the... so, i was thinking about that the other day because the, i'm i'm the same way like i, I remember the... when it yeah, aired so. and it was oh, so yeah. cool that like i thought i could go outside and and see homer somewhere on the street you know that one has like a, a very special place in my heart the one where all of the um like uh figures come to life like the pet boy guys come to life and like uh yeah, the, the you know their donut guy comes to life. I remember With, really liking that. The uh, the song at the end. The oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, guarantee void in Tennessee. Just don't look. <laughs> Just don't look. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I really enjoyed that one. Um, ah, there's uh, it like in later ones. I, there was one where like Bart and Lisa got superpowers that I remember being kind of funny. Yeah. Um, that I'm this has this year's aired. I I, th- I think, think I think it was last week. Yeah, I, I don't I haven't seen it yet. Seems way too early. Right? Yeah, they they've been doing that. It's like early October. I well, don't they got to compete. They got to compete what. with like baseball. Like uh yeah. Like if if it doesn't if it doesn't like if the baseball schedule means it, but yeah that it needs to air like a a ton closer to actual Halloween. Exactly, because uh, otherwise you feel like it's over, you know. Yeah, in 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 my in my opinion, but yeah, I would say like of of them all, the one that like is really standing out to me was the three D episode. It was like the one that I was like, this is so so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, well, and so anything with Otto is good. Like yeah, Otto's Otto's the greatest. Yeah, <laughs> so funny. Um, the thing I really love about the Simpsons, I, I really feel like they kind of shaped a lot of my musical tastes because there's they, you know, they throw in a a song every now and then that's like a good classic rock song or, you know, um, yeah. there's that whole episode they do it at, at uh, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's like the Lollapalooza thing where yes. homer gets the cannonball in the stomach and Correct. peter frampton's there the smashing pumpkins are there cypress hill it was just like yeah uh so like uh the, the big you know the one that i always hear about uh, like later in life matt Groening loves nrbq does he like, really yeah it's his favorite band they're great which is like a which is like a funny just a thing like a funny thing for it to be his favorite band but even like uh, so we played to you know to to bring it back to the show we played two Spinal Tap songs. Even Spinal Tap has a guest appearance in The Simpsons. You know, Bart. That's right. No house go and see a Spinal Tap show, and I remember watching that and thinking that that was so cool that Spinal Tap was in The Simpsons. Two two uh, comedy Shear. franchises. Harry yeah, Shearer. Shearer. There's Definitely. our connection. Yeah. Thanks, Caleb. Shout out to Caleb again. Well, I don't know what number this is, but. Uh... 
He's, he's coming in there with the facts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks for thanks for playing, James. Four out of five. Great job. Um, I'll send you a beer. I'll send you a beer. You still want one, one, one for the one? one yeah. Oh, I'd send you a six pack if you got five in a row, but it's just one. I'll make it a tall boy. It'll be a tall. All right. Boy. That'll work. That'll okay. work. That'll work. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's just kick off this next batch of songs with a, a song by one of the Simpsons. Wow. Uh, thanks, James. Look at us go. Amazing song here. Uh, Chicago, uh, about the 1968 Democratic National uh, Convention protests uh, that happened here in Chicago, um, was uh, depicted in Trial of the Chicago 7, which, uh, James, I, I believe you worked on. Is that correct? That is correct. I uh, was um, what we would call director van for that and uh, drove around our, uh, our our guy and I should know his Aaron Sorkin. Name. Sorkin. 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 I drove I drove around Sorkin and uh, his uh, assistant Lauren uh, for about two or three weeks that they uh, were here. How, so how, how did you end up uh, driving Aaron Sorkin? Uh, it's, it, it literally was, um, so it's been my job for a while. Uh, I started, um, I became a Teamster in like 2017 uh, and was a van, was a van driver for movies and television shows. And so normally I don't drive around Aaron Sorkin because he's not on every movie and television show that we film in Chicago. Wait, I thought he was on everything. Not on, not on everything. No, not not Chicago Fire or anything like that. You know, I don't work on that end of the spectrum. Uh, that that's a whole different Teamster organization. It's that's just, the just Hogan. Film then, huh? That's the Hogan. So uh, I do. We end up doing the streaming service stuff. We're the Amazon guys, the Netflix guys, the very uh, cool. Currently, I'm on a uh, currently I'm on a CBS. I work for CBS Viacom for a CW show. Honestly, my mood has changed throughout the night here because I found out we're not striking on Monday. There won't really? be a strike on Monday. Wait, what happened? Uh, I got a text that we have to go to work on Monday and I am, I don't know if you can tell over a zoom, but I am bummed, <laughs> completely oh, dude, bummed. I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, it's that's, that's really surprising. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they came to an agreement, I guess, uh, tonight. I just got a call from, wow. so I'm a, I'm what you would call a co-captain. I just got a, a text from my captain in that last uh, musical break uh no strike we work monday so well, bummer, I, man. yeah you know, i never it's a great job i absolutely love doing it uh but i don't want to do it for two weeks that sounded fun yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to go to some pumpkin patches oh, i wanted man. to just enjoy you know some fall things that i don't get to enjoy so uh that's the long, this the long end. The short end of it is that this is my job. So I used to just be a van driver. Now I'm, I'm in management. I'm a co-captain now people, but I used to be just a lowly van driver and uh, I would drive people around. And uh, uh, what ended up happening on the trial of the Chicago seven is they uh, wanted me to drive, um, some producers and the directors and things for what you would call a scout. We would go out and look at a location that we would be filming at. And on that scout, Sorkin sits in the passenger seat of my car or my van, my 15 passenger van. And, you know, I'm, I'm me. So I'm, I'm chilling and I'm listening to some uh, 60s on six because the van had Sirius XM. So and good. So we go through the we go through the whole thing and like uh, I actually missed a turn uh, on that scout like I totally blew a turn, and everybody knew I had blown a turn, uh, so I was like a little bit like oh fuck um, you know I totally you know didn't turn where I was supposed to but long story short we we uh, everybody arrived safely, 
And then I got to take the, the director of photography wants to go buy some wine after the scout as one does. So I take him to a wine shop with the producer on the way to their hotel. It's like a mini mission that I got now. And somewhere in that mini mission, the producer clearly gets a call or a, you know, a text. And uh, as he like gets out of the van to get to his hotel, he's like, uh, are you available tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay, make sure you're on. And so I like text my, my guy and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. It's, you know, something weird. Uh, well, turns out Sorkin told everybody that the 60s music that I was playing was getting him in the zone for the filming. Dude. And he wanted to make sure that I would be his driver throughout the, uh, throughout the thing. So oh, that is uh, so cool. What so uh, do, do you, what kind of stuff was playing that day? Like what what do you think? Uh, no idea. Just uh, random, like just sixties on six randomness. Uh, I, I honestly that day didn't like. Uh, there was nothing of note that day. Sure. The next day, the first day I picked him up was like the day of note because it was the first day of filming. Uh, I got like the van stuck in some mud and like some people had to like push me out of it. And then like the big thing of note was he, there was like this crucial song that I have not, I feel terrible saying this. I haven't watched the movie, but um, there was like this crucial scene where like people were going to be like chanting and singing a song. And uh, so he was like, he's like searching, right? He's like, like the song hasn't been locked in okay and uh the song that he wants uh, comes on the radio uh, on that first day as we're driving back after the first day venus comes on the i'm your venus yeah i'm your fire your desire and he's like this is it like he gets like the you know the the, the hand of god has touched sorkin it's touched his brain and Sorkin needs this song. Well, it turns out that song wasn't written until like 1969. Oh, and no. <laughs> that song is like famously in like a chic Venus, uh, yeah. like a Razor commercial. Razor commercial, yeah, for sure. So throughout the next two weeks, every time Sorkin gets in the van, it's like, these motherfuckers ain't gonna let me use this motherfucking song. <laughs> and he's like all hot about it. He wanted Venus so bad How and I, I can't, I haven't watched it. So I can't imagine he got Venus. The second he said it like a, a, a day or two later was like, the cause we were like, this song is great. He's like, this song is great. And I'm like, yeah, this is great, man. It's like, yeah. Uh, and he's like, where have I heard this? I'm like, you know, there's a razor commercial that was really popular. You know, fucking 10 years ago, this was all over TV. Oh, oh no, yeah. No. Uh, you know, but he, 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 there's something about Venus was like floating through his mind. He wanted Venus, wanted Venus and didn't, couldn't get Venus. Um, the best sure. conversation I had, I really, throughout, I normally like don't attempt to like, uh, the whole job of driving famous people around, which I do a lot is to not pitch movies to famous people like that is like <laughs> that's, that's rule number entire, one that's the entire job like uh you know the the you can miss all the turns you can get the van stuck in the mud just don't fucking pitch you know some movie to aaron sorkin well it's a I sacred bro space i broke that rule unfortunately uh because i was like you should do a monkeys movie like uh, I and Yo. he he loves the monkeys too. So we were talking about the monkeys, and then I was driving one day. I was just like, "Dude, do a monkeys movie." So if Sorkin ever does a monkeys movie, I'm taking full blown credit. Absolutely, dude. Well, it's, we we have it on credit. on record here, dude. <laughs> uh, but so he loves the monkeys. I know that about him. Um, he really loved Three Dog Night. Was okay. like his thing really really they're pretty good great yeah. vocals yeah no and uh, and it's like one of those ones that's like i know the three dog night songs but i don't know three dog night but he, sure 
mad into Three Dog Night. Mad into Three Dog Night. Um, They've got some hits and then some uh, some buried treasures for sure. And then I know, like I know he's a guitar guy, so he's probably into Clapton. So he like, and he asked me who I thought the best living guitar player one time was. And here's here's how we get it back to the uh, to the music. I said Knopfler. I said Knopfler was probably the best living guitar player. I actually hate the uh, guitar. I think it's bullshit. Uh, I <laughs> I can't stand it for the most part. But okay. if any if anybody's gonna play it, I want Knopfler to play it. Uh, oh, Caleb's hopping in here. He says, uh, looks like Joy to the World made it to the soundtrack, but not Venus. So he oh. ended up sticking with some Three Dog Night, which isn't bad. Yeah, so, so, yeah, he does love, he absolutely loves Three Dog Night. I know that. But, yeah, the Venus was like, this is this was this taboo subject. Like, uh, it, <laughs> it just, it couldn't work, and he wanted it to work the whole time. And so, so bad. it was always damn the man. Every time he'd get into the van, this was, I would get updates on, Fucking, they're not gonna. Venus ain't gonna work, man. It was, it was fun. It was a. There was a. I think it was the. I think it was more the. Uh, it just didn't. It wasn't out. It didn't exist in 1968. Was what How really funny. got him. Eventually, right. he was. He would have been fine with it. He would have said, "Just put it in." They would have, you know, like these kids heard a demo, you know. That's, well, I'm I'm glad you uh, you influenced the movie somehow, and I'm glad you maybe influenced uh, a monkeys movie coming up. So we'll we'll see how that goes. I want to, if if the monkeys movie comes out, yeah, for sure. He didn't win the uh, the Oscar for sure. like director. He was up for director. If he would have won that, I would have also taken credit for that. And I also <laughs> yeah, you got him in the zone. One correct. I one hundred percent would have like made sure that any director that came to chicago i would send an email to and be like you want the gold you gotta <laughs> you gotta ride in the uh passenger seat of my 15 passenger van right perfect but i don't i don't even get to drive vans anymore they took me out of that they heard i pitched the monkeys movie to sorkin and they said, you're out kid. you're out of here you broke the cardinal rule yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, they, I i failed up now i just tell other vans not to do that Right. Well, yeah, share share the knowledge, man. Correct. <laughs> um so I wanted to say like uh back uh when I when I first moved to Chicago, a, a coworker had told me about um this dude who was writing a song every day and and putting it online and it was under uh the name Today's Hits and I found out years later that that's you. Uh yeah, that is you, you had a coworker that knew about Today's Hits. <laughs> Yeah, he was, he was, he was a hip environment. I, I don't know how he heard about it, but he mentioned it to me. I never like I didn't realize till years later when I was I was looking you up. Um, but yeah, so it's it, you did it a song a day for how 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 long? Uh, the like the initial run, I want to say was one thousand one hundred and thirty eight days. That's amazing. And then uh, there, although there is a caveat. There was one day in like right away, uh, I want to say July, like 27th, 28th or 29th. And uh, Caleb can look this up. Uh, the, it's <laughs> the day that I could not upload a song. I made a song, but I couldn't upload it to Tumblr because Tumblr was down. Because So Amy it's not Winehouse, your fault. Amy Winehouse died. And like the the amount of people reposting pictures of Amy Winehouse on Tumblr crashed the entire site. How crazy. Just like I couldn't I could not like there was So it was I, it was Amy Winehouse's fault then. Amy Amy July 23rd 2011. Thank you, Kayla. He's on it. He's on He's it. Completely on it. And that song was good. Real real good. Uh and so I had to wait until uh I think like I think I waited until like day a hundred, because uh, this was like this is still early. We're talking like day, you know, uh, you know, I can't, I, I can't add, but you know, this might have been day like ninety three or four, right? So like a week or two later, for like day a hundred, I uploaded a video. Okay. And then, 
then Tumblr, because the whole thing with the today's hits and like Tumblr, you could only upload one song a day. So I literally oh, okay. couldn't yeah. upload. Makes sense. I couldn't upload two songs a day. So I waited until I did like a I did like a video for day a hundred and then uploaded that song. But they're technically very early on within the first hundred days. I did miss one because Amy Winehouse died and Tumblr was not uploading. Well, were, it, it, at least you wrote stopped. the song. I, I think it's it's a very impressive feat. I think it's absolutely amazing that you did it. Um, I, I've list, I, I haven't gone gone through the whole no. thing yet. No. Um, <laughs> But um, I, I did want to play a few of them, if that's all right with you. Just a, a couple of that's these. That's all right. There's some, uh, some really fun little ditties. Uh, some of them are really tiny songs. Some of them are a bit longer, but they're all just uh, pretty low-key and a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I just want to play a few of them here. Sounds good. You can play, you can play a few of them, but don't listen to all of them. Okay. <laughs> Right. So I think that gives you a good uh, good feeling for what today's hits is, is kind of all about. Um, yeah. Lovely songs. You know, I think you really you kind of built up your songwriting chops uh, doing these. Yeah, it's somewhat of the reason that I did it like uh, in 2011 when I started uh, was like the world had uh been taken under the it, Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule uh, was like a hot topic. Okay. And so I think in some ways it was like me kind of being like the, this, I'm going to put in my 10,000 hours. Uh, That's great. But also I just kept losing songs. Like I had been in college bands and like I was in like two or three bands in Lexington Okay. Uh, Kentucky. Uh, um, uh, the Lemons, I think. Were, were you with them at one point? Uh, yeah, I was. I uh, the, uh, Lemons came. Lemons came late. Lemons was like more like heard what I did with today's hits and were like, uh, you know, let's steal some of these dummies' songs, kind of thing. Okay, I, I uh, see. They were like, yeah, we can, <laughs> we can use this. Uh, they, uh, you know, they, uh, they jumped on, they jumped on me, but this was like, even before that, like, just, I had been in, uh, like college bands, like, uh, okay. bands, bands in my college town in Lexington, Kentucky. And, uh, I, uh, just kept losing songs. Like if it wasn't for this song, like if it wasn't, if I wrote a song and it wasn't for this band or it wasn't for this band or it wasn't for this band and I didn't play it all the time, I would get stoned and forget it. Uh, I see. Yeah. And so this was like my way that was like, I is it, it, as stoned as I get, I can always find this blog where right. I can remember it's, it's this there. song. It's there. It, yeah. You, you've, you've built it and it is a, uh, it's, it's your statue. Yeah. At this point, at this point, at this point. Yeah. Although, um, I, I just my, my assumption is Tumblr will go down eventually, and I'll uh, I you know I will just have to uh, tell people that I was once you know <laughs> I was once retweeted six times on Tumblr and don't you forget <laughs> it. Well, uh, I think one of, one of the biggest songs probably to come out of this project. Correct me if I'm wrong. Would would probably be What Up Dog. Um, yeah. I would Peaks. say. It's yeah, I would say it's the biggest. The Twin Peaks took off with it. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, to play that, and I, I realized that you're mm -hmm. actually on this track. So I, I do have you your voice on some vinyl here. Correct, correct. They, uh, sometimes they have to fight me off of the stage when they play it. This time they actually invited me on. Sure. Yeah. I, I, so I saw you uh, at the Riv with them. Oh, no way. <laughs> that was insane, uh, dude. That now, was from, a... from, like a, from an outsider's perspective, what did that look like? Did I push that security guard? Like, uh, oh, I, don't, I, I, I don't know if I saw that. No, okay, I was kind of okay. stuck in the, the, the middle of the pit. Gotcha. Uh, being so thrown there's, around. So There's a GQ article that like got written about that. That really? says like that says like some random dude with a hockey uh, like a hockey jersey on, bum rush security and jumped on stage. That doesn't sound right. That, I think there's more to that story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, their shows do get wild, and uh, this is actually um, a clip from a, a live show. So 
I think, uh, yeah, it was Talia Hall. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So we had opened up for them. This would have been uh, New Year's Eve. I'm going to call it 2017. All right. Well, it's a it's a wild recording. And then uh, after that, we'll we'll just hop into the next uh, few songs and then uh, start to wrap things up. But thanks, James. Thanks for chatting. And uh, let's get into What Up, Dog. All right. Like we said earlier, you can't say no to Little ELO. Um, but I just wanted to say once again, just a, a quick thank you to James Swanberg. Um, I, I really appreciate the, the playlist you put together. I think we had a whole lot of fun. Thanks to those who stuck around. Uh, we really appreciate it. But uh, thanks, James. This has been a, a, a great playlist, man. It's, uh, it's been a blast. James is going to be playing at Chuba's Tavern on October 18th. We'll, we'll see you there. I thought I'd be um, off work. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this, man. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a long day for you. I didn't even think about that. It's going to start at about m- midnight on Sunday because we had uh, we prepped for a strike. So I have to move to location Damn. Uh, Monday in Humble Park. It's absolutely going to suck. Damn, absolutely going to suck. I'll be sending as many good vibes your way as possible. I hope... Uh, Hope it's not too bad, but it'll all add to the show. It's gonna be qu- now quite the show. Well, I'm I'm even more excited, man. I'll I'll see you there. Um, we have one more song from you, and then uh, one last pick. But uh, I wanted to see if uh, if you maybe kind of talk us uh, through behind closed doors and tell us what that song's about. I would have written behind closed doors like uh, it, there's like generations of like girls that are like about today's like in today's hits zone like the first year or so was like uh you know attempting to get a girl back that didn't work then the like the next year after that was um a girl that like i had dreamed of that i wanted and then that was a terrible idea and then the third year was uh, a girl that I had and wanted to get rid of. And then this Behind Closed Doors is actually the fourth generation, which is uh, the girl that I am still with now. And uh, it's so, so much better. And, uh, you know, it's just a song That's about crazy. how, like, I truly believe, you know, the lyric kind of say it, but. There are many me's and many you's. Uh, like, uh, like that's just something that I truly believe. Uh, I'm a cancer, uh, so we're like known as to be moody. So I like, there's like, there are a lot of me's. Uh, you know, I can be a lot of different ways. Like, I have a way that I could be with a waiter, and then a way that I could be with, uh, you know, somebody on a bus. And it could be, you know, like, uh, so yeah. this, this is just a, about the me that I am behind closed doors with the, the one that I love my one and only. Well, that's beautiful, James. Well, 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 uh, I think we'll, we'll end on that. So thank you so much. Um, we're, we're going to play this song and then one more, but thanks so much, James. This has uh, been an absolute pleasure. You're very welcome. You have a great night. You too, buddy.